everyone. Well, what do you think this is? It looks like a marrow, doesn't it? Well, actually, it's a courgette. And even though I've only got two courgette plants in the garden, I've got a bit of a glut. And my husband has said he doesn't want any more courgettes for dinner. Now I've been serving them up as stir fries. I've spiralized them into courgette spaghetti. I've sauteed them. I've steamed them. I've put them in all sorts of mixtures and I just can't hide them anymore. So this one is going to be courgette chutney. Well, I think that will go OK with cheese. So I'm going to give it a go. I've got yellow and green courgettes. I'm not going to use this one. I've already chopped up the courgettes. This is going to be for a ratatouille. I don't know if my husband's actually going to leave me after the ratatouille or, but, you know, let's see. So I've got golden courgettes here and I've also got green courgettes. I've chopped them up or diced them and they're going to go in my pot along with two cooking apples, two medium sized onions, four small garlic cloves, some chopped ginger, some dark brown soft sugar, some sultanas, some garam masala, ground chilli, some vinegar, oh and a pepper. I'm going to chop all these up and put them here in my big jam kettle and cook them. So I'll get to it. I've just chopped up the onions and popped them in on top. I'm now going to peel and dice the apples and dice the pepper. You can use a red pepper by the way, I'm just using a yellow one as is what I had. That's the pepper gone in and that's the apples that have gone in. Now it doesn't matter if they go a bit brown because the chutney is going to be brown anyway and it also doesn't matter how big the chunks are because they're going to go all mushy. These are Bramley cooking apples so they will go to a mush but it will be the flavour behind them that's the important thing in the chutney. In the recipe I'm using it says that you should now sprinkle some salt all over this um, to start to take out the water and leave it for an hour covered with a tea towel. I'm not going to do this because I'm not very keen on too much salt in my chutney. So I'm just going to carry on without doing the salt step. It will need a little bit of extra boiling to reduce the chutney to the right consistency, um, but I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to put the rest of my ingredients in and I'll put these up on the screen as to the amounts that you need. This here is my favourite garlic press and I'm going to crush the garlic into the mixture. It's quite an easy way of crushing garlic, as you can see. That's the garlic, the ginger, the garam masala and the chilli powder. Now I've got some sultanas here and I'm just going to pick through them because sometimes you can get little stalks. And I'm going to try and get rid of all of those stalks. That's my soft brown sugar just going in. Right, I'm just about to put my vinegar in and I've measured out just under 300 mils here. This is the time to shut the kitchen door and open all the windows because otherwise it's going to stink the house out. So pouring in my vinegar, although it's very vinegary right now, I wish you could smell the beautiful aromas coming up off the garam masala, absolutely wonderful. It's just starting to boil now, as you can see there's quite a bit of liquid forming in there already, so 
all of this is going to really boil down and just reduce into a pulp and that liquid's going to boil off. Another reason to keep the windows open. Now it's reached a boil, I'm just going to turn it down to just simmer gently. So it's not such a rolling boil. And I'm going to keep stirring that now, every now and again, until it forms into a pulp. I've just given it a really good stir and a bit of a pummel and you can see that all the liquid is just disappearing now. So I'll turn the heat off and I'll just let that cool down for a bit before I pot it up. So here we are, I've got four jars in the end. I made sure that uh, I didn't have any air bubbles as well as I could see and I put some wax discs on top and just to avoid the metal tops disintegrating from the vinegar I just put a double layer of um, cling film underneath the lids and I'm going to label those up and they have to be kept for two weeks before you can eat them And as if by magic, it's now two weeks later. My chutney's been sitting in the dark for two weeks, hopefully maturing nicely. And I'm going to try it with some brie and crackers today. So let's get into it. I'll just remove that. And the wax lid. Let's just give this a sniff. Well, it definitely smells like chutney. I can smell the spices in there. And I can smell the garam masala. Everything's sort of matured into a brownish colour. Just see if I can get a bit of the yellow courgette as well. So let's just try a little bit on its own. Mm. I got a sultana in there and that's very sweet. It's very aromatic. It's not as hot and spicy as, a, as some of my chutneys have been. I can definitely taste the apple. So let's try it with some cheese. It's quite runny this brie. Very mild. I must say, I'm very pleased with that. I think my husband would like that as well. I'll just taste this bit here. There's still quite a crunch to the, the courgette. The yellow one especially was quite a large one. And there's still quite some bounce to the, the flesh of it. It didn't quite pulp up completely. And I left some of the skin on as well, but... It's not tough. It's uh, it's quite mild. So that one's quite that one's still quite hard. There's definitely a crunch to it, but the skin is tender. 
so it's a very nice mild chutney definitely recommend that recipe if you like this video please like and subscribe and hope to see you again soon bye